Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all doing well and I hope you're all staying safe as usual. So I wanted to basically do a whole run guide on dead cells and there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to do this. I'm going to stop this at the tubes so I can kind of explain everything before I get into my strategy on tubes. So I see oftentimes on my channel a lot of people leaving comments saying, hey, I'm stuck at 1BC, 2BC, 3BC, etc. And I'm not sure how to beat it. I'm dying to this or that a lot. And sometimes what happens is on Reddit or the Dead Cells Discord, sometimes people will give very specific suggestions such as, you know, use magic missiles with an owl or use carbine or Hakuto's bow. And while that's valid, I don't like to do that at the end of the day because not everybody enjoys using everything. For example, I prefer using Fire Blast over all of the weapons that you see on the screen for my own reasons. And is it the best weapon? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's really hard to really objectively say, but it would be the one that I enjoy the most. So it's going to be the one that I generally take. Funny enough, in this run, I'm not actually taking it, but I don't want to give you guys specific solutions. What I want to do instead is kind of talk about things from a generalist perspective. So this is going to be a 5 BC run. This will apply to 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 BC in terms of how do you beat this game? How do you approach certain mobs? How do you deal with certain situations? And how do you deal with the general mechanics of the game? So I hope you all enjoy this video. I'm going to be doing this in Tactics and Survival because obviously the strategy is going to be a little bit different because Tactics has an entirely different gameplay. Survival has an entirely different gameplay. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to be talking about these tubes. So this, the tubes only appear if you've beaten 1BC and have unlocked it. And the recycling tubes will give you five different items. They will give you two skills, a shield, a ranged weapon, and a melee weapon. And the stats don't really matter, so sometimes you kind of have to get lucky with the stats. On 4 and 5 BC, and I'm not sure about 3 BC, I think it's also there on 3 BC, you get an amulet of two stats, and you can be like red, purple, it can be purple, green. In this case, I got two red. So I'm thinking, okay, like let's go with a brutality build. And so we see this thing all the way on the left side. We've got Snake Fangs, we got the Fire Blast, we got the Frontline Shield, Tesla Coil, and Sinew Slicer. Four out of the five of Brutality is probably the easiest take. If I didn't care about the amulet, which generally, you know, it doesn't actually matter at the end of the day. You can get whatever amulet you want, you can get whatever tube you want. If I had to choose, honestly, I would probably have gone with the second one, or first or second one, I would say. The first one has the most synergy, but the second one looks the most fun. You know, I love Smoke Bomb, I love Magic Missile, so I probably would have gone that one just out of my own, like, personal preferences. But you can choose whatever you want in general. Like, if you're on 2 or 3 BC, you only get one stat in your amulet. Or 2 BC, I know you only get one stat in your amulet, so ultimately, like, it doesn't matter which one you choose. A lot of people like to choose the one that's congruent with whatever amulet that they get, but it, it ultimately doesn't matter. So I go ahead, and I'm going to choose the left one over here. All, I got a bunch of Brutality items. It's... It's looking good, and I'm going to go ahead and keep this Fire Blast in the backpack. You never know when you're going to need it. I personally will always keep that fifth item in my backpack. Again, you don't know when you need certain things. Right away, we're dealing with this. I hate this part. Like, whenever it pops up in Prisoner Quarters, I hate it. It's like three Inquisitors, a bunch of rats. I, I'm able to get out of it. You know, Snake Fangs is an excellent early game item. So, I think the first thing I want to talk about is, like, what do I? what's good in the early game? Because, believe it or not... There's certain weapons that are really good in the first couple biomes, but kind of drop off later on. And there are certain weapons that are really bad early game, but are great late game. So for examples of the latter would be a hemorrhage or a balance blade. Not very good in the early game, but tend to pick up as you get more scrolls, as you get more synergy. But Snake Fangs is a weapon of the opposite. So really good early game, not bad late game, but it can drop off a little bit. The thing about snake fangs that makes it so good is that there's a lot of weird mobs in prisoner quarters so you get a lot of good dot synergy and the nice thing about poison is that it spreads to nearby enemies you don't really have to you can just beat up a rat and then the oven guardian's gonna probably get some status here and it just makes your life a little bit easier so that's generally why i kind of approach it in that manner um the it's not a hard level and honestly like, if you take a couple of hits, it's not the biggest deal in the world. The enemies don't hit that hard outside of the Rampager. But I try to get the 30 in this level. 30 meaning kill door, so every level has a kill door. Every level but Prisoner Quarters has a 60 door. Prisoner Quarters, because of the lack of enemies, only has 30. But I try to get the 30 because getting 
good gear in the second biome is very important because enemies in the second biome, especially once you start hitting that two or three BC, that's when they start hitting really hard. So you want to make sure that you get some good item before then. As far as the shop in prisoner quarters, I generally don't care about it. I don't really bother. The gear is not that great and it's in 5 BC and 4 BC, it's only level six gear. So it's kind of trivial. Level seven gear is like way better than level six. I believe prison corners only gives like level three gear in like zero and one BC. So yeah, don't even bother with it. Like just go ahead and wait until the second biome to like start doing the shops. Um, but as far as, you know, shops are concerned, I'll kind of talk about what I look for in shops a little bit later on. Like once I start hitting the late game, cause that's actually when the shops are much more important than in the early game. Cause in the early game, you're not really going to have much of a build identity at that point, especially if you're running normal mode, custom mode. I would say the one thing that makes custom mode easier is that you have a build identity from the start. So you know what you're building, whereas you kind of have to plan out a little bit more intentionally on normal mode. Um, but I still love custom mode. Like it's just a fun way to like test things out. I would say one of the challenges with prisoner quarters, I would say is just having to hit the rats while also trying to kill the enemies. I'm going to go ahead and take this corrosive cloud to get rid of the Tesla coil. Just nice to have all brutality skills, get my maximize my DPS as much as I can. Um, I do something kind of silly here. I'm going to let this play out. So with these, with, when I rewind, I'm going to let it play out first and then I'll rewind. So um, I handle this atrociously bad. So let's kind of go here. I'll pause it at the moment that I messed up. So right here, I, I got two or three hits off. That's good. What I should have done next is I should have run all the way up and I should have just let both of these guys aggro me. I don't know why I didn't do that. It's something I typically do. I just got greedy with the damage. That's one thing about Dead Cells is that you always have an opportunity to be able to um, redeem yourself, I guess. Like if you get hit, obviously you can get a lot of HP back, but that's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is you can employ like a hit and run strategy a lot of the time. Yes, I know malaise is a thing on 5BC, but it's not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. But, you know, I, sh I hit him a couple times. I should have run up. I would have been okay. Unfortunately, I just made a, you know, it was, it was a lapse in judgment. And I mistimed the parry. And then I get hit by the demolisher. And then I got a double parry, which is nice. And then I mistimed the parry again. I should have just tried to avoid everything. Fortunately, it's only prisoner quarters. You don't take that much damage. I'm still at 77 HP. So... 77% HP, so I'm not that worried. Um, if this was Hype Castle, I would probably be dead by now because Demolishers hit very hard. I, I think the only other, I think they're in a couple other levels. I think the other level that they're in is Stilt and Distillery, I wanna say. And then they pop as a pop up as a random enemy uh, mob. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the Arboretum. I'll talk about the Arboretum once we get there. I'll talk about some of the differences between zero to five BC when we're in that rest area between this level and Arboretum. Um, again, if you are enjoying this so far, uh, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for all Dead Cell stuff. And yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some of the differences between zero and five BC. So zero to five BC, there are changes in between each one. So zero BC is like your base game. It's like the normal stuff. One BC, add some new enemies, the most notable being the knife thrower. And you're also able to go into the cavern, I think for the first time. Um, well, you can go into cavern on zero BC, but then you're able to get the key on one BC for the first time. And two BC, more new enemies, and you get less health flasks like in between each biome. As you can see on five BC, I don't have any. I'll talk about mutations once I get my third mutation. So don't worry about that right now. I'm just gonna start off with combo, basic mutation on brutality. Um, as far as 3 BC is concerned, the Rampager is added, enemies hit harder. 4 BC, enemies start teleporting towards you, and that's actually when you can unlock the 5th BC by defeating the giant. Hopefully that's not too much of a spoiler. And on 5 BC, um, the enemies will continue to teleport and you start getting malaise. You used to get malaise on 4 BC, but I think in the last patch it was edited to now malaise is only on 5 BC, which I think is a good change. But anyways, Arboretum bit of a weird level the idea with arboretum is you kind of have to understand what is happening in here and you have to be able to prioritize enemies and that's going to be one of the main sticking points of my runs is that i'm able to prioritize certain enemies over others which allows me to succeed most of the time i mean i still die in this game but you know, most of the time I'm able to see success because of the fact that I can prioritize in biomes. And in this biome, 
what the priorities are is going to be the little jerk shrooms and the impaler and impalers are not as often as they are in the ancient sewers which is my second favorite biome in the game i don't go to ancient sewers here but in any case um yeah that's that's the main thing about each biome is that you want to understand what your priorities are and in this one jerk shrooms and the impalers flying enemies will always have a priority just because they can hit you from up above and with the level like arboretum and all the second levels have flying enemies actually it just uh it would promenade they go down to one hit but buzz cutters are there in toxic sewers and in arboretum uh as far as being able to handle flying enemies in general a good rule of thumb is to have something that can hit a flying enemy in this case i have two things i have three things actually that do a really good job against flying enemies snake fangs um it has great hang time because i can like teleport towards enemies and oh this i should explain this so i'm gonna exit this room and come back basically just to let my sinew slicer come back on cooldown lets me kind of regroup myself just in case there's another enemy over there i don't know if there's a eater or something like that or some buzz cutter so i'm trying to make sure that i don't like mess it up i don't have an extra jump so i can't like jump over the rampager um i'm gonna exit the room again because he has that really annoying circle ability and the rampager tends to stop i it's been a, i don't know if it's a bug or a feature but in any case i'm able to finally parry him get the kill not nothing too bad there with elites don't try too hard to parry just roll elites are generally not that bad certain elite abilities are a bigger pain in the butt than others i'll talk about them if i need to talk about them but in general elite abilities aren't that big of a deal outside of like the cage and the turret especially when you're cursed that's when it becomes the worst but i wasn't cursed so no biggie um so yeah i talked about starting gear i'm gonna talk about mutations in a little bit so oh yeah so flying enemies and I have a shield, so flying enemies like the buzz cutters will go down typically to a parry. Depends on the shield that you're carrying, but AoE shields are really good, but you don't need one. Like, it'll die just by hit, being hit by like a spike shield or a thunder shield or something like that. So, um, you'll be well, thunder shield can only unlock on 5 EC, but most shields you'll be okay. Like, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but definitely make sure that you aren't getting hit. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I did in Prisoner Quarters and then just kind of re-roll this one back just because there's a lot that happened and I did everything very intentionally. A lot of Dead Cells is like learning to adapt and knowing when to do certain things. So let's go back uh, right here. So I'm able to kill this first eater, nothing doing there. So I see these two Jerk Shrooms. I am not in a good position to hit either one of them because I don't have a ranged weapon. So. Uh, when you have a melee attack, Jerk Shrooms can kind of run up and hit you whenever they want. And so I kind of let this Rampager follow me around for a little bit, just because it's easier if I jump to the next platform, use my Sinew Slicer, get all my kills from there. So things like that, you get through experience. Like don't put too much pressure on yourself right now to be doing that sort of thing. That's just kind of, it's another example of just like understanding the biome that you're in and just being able to like pick certain spots to jump to. So placement is a big thing in this game. Um, it's funny, I've been playing a lot of Bloons lately, Bloons Tower Defense. Um, shout out to Kevin Fetters, who's been a major help in helping me get better at that game. Um, monkey placements everything in Bloons Tower Defense, and it is a huge deal in this game as well. Like, well, not monkey placement, but general placement of where you are. Because you need to understand what enemies are going to do what, where enemies are going to spawn, things like that, and like being able to like find out where you are and being able to like jump to the right platform is a huge part of this game and a huge part of being able to beat 5bc actually um one thing i want to know obviously there will be 5bc spoilers at the end but that's only stuff like after hand of the king so i wouldn't worry about that at all like i'll mention it again once we get to hand of the king you can click off the video if you don't want spoilers um i get the 60 door right there every level but prisoner quarters has a 60 prisoner quarters has the 30 because there's not enough enemies um another just chaotic section right here and again this is just understanding where the enemies are going to go and like being able to locate where you are and eventually getting myself to a safe spot so i'm able to get out there without getting hit just purely out of placement it's all about placement in this game and like just being in the right spot jumping to the right spot a lot of people look, think about defense in this game as just shields but that's not actually true shields is a big part of it obviously because you know they're shields but it's not just that it's also just like being able to like dodge 
appropriately. Sometimes you don't want to dodge when there's like a huge mob and then you have a roll cooldown and that becomes like a giant pain in the butt. But yeah, um, you know, we're just kind of rolling along on this level and I'm barely able to avoid that spawned enemy. So one of the things about malaise is that random enemies will spawn once you hit two plus malaise and the frequency at which they spawn will increase the further you go along. They implemented the new melee system in, I believe, 2.2. Very controversial one, actually, but I've gotten used to it. I just wish it was a little less obnoxious. Um, and that was another spawned enemy. Don't worry, that enemy does not spawn that often, but it is very shocking when it does. I have a parry guide, by the way, speaking of which. Um, if you want to check that out, it's pretty good, I would say. Um, so I'm going to go into shots a little bit later, but just know that I take the torch here because as far as, you know, the next level is concerned, I'm going to be going into prison depths and prison depths is a very tough level. So I need good DPS. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a torch. Uh, again, I can just get kind of greedy with the damage. So I think it's important to note, like you will make mistakes in this game. Like you're not expected to be perfect unless you run like a curse sword. But even then, like curse sword runs aren't really perfect. They just... They're technically, but they're not actually. Um, yeah, so Torch gives me good DPS and, you know, get some decent synergy out of it. I, it's not the biggest deal in the world if you don't have, like, a big barn bursting weapon by the time you get to Prison Depths, but it's generally recommended because otherwise it would take more time. Funny enough, I actually get a Torch here. It could have saved my money, but that's part of the randomness of this game is that... Oftentimes what happens is that you get an item and then you're like, oh, like I, sh that same item will spawn like two seconds later. Uh, again, targeting the Impaler first, making sure that he doesn't do anything. Thornies, be really careful with Thornies. Like if you have a melee weapon, just, and they, you start attacking them and then you see like they're about to kind of turn around, just, just wait for them to turn. Um, one thing about the Impalers is that obviously they throw their kids because they're bad mothers. And when it comes to that, if you kill the Impaler first, then you're actually in a much better position. Uh, one strategy on 4BC you can do is intentionally aggroing enemies. And that's something that I like to do very often because it puts me in a safer spot. Uh, Yeeter just, I don't know how that aggroed me, but um, pretty easy kill right there. And with invisible enemies, you just kind of have to know that where they are and the timing. It's one of those things that the more you play this game, the easier it gets when it comes to things like that. So we're going to be wrapping up Arboretum. So a lot of people may be asking why I go to Prison Depths. On 4 and 5 BC, it's not exactly a must, but like a strong recommendation because it gives you an extra curse chest and there's a higher chance of you getting a challenge roof. So the chances of you coming out of there with one or two more scrolls is actually a lot better. And plus you can get some fantastic gear just going into the level. You can get, you get, you can get level 9 gear if you hit the 60 door, which I was able to do right there. So... You know, things like that, you got to keep in mind. Um, I always go to Prison Depths or Corrupted Prison on uh, fi on 5 BC. On the before boss cells, like, you don't need to worry about it. But yeah, so Prison Depths, it's this whole other strategy. So we'll get into that. Uh, 60 door first, and I'm going to pick up my cells. I don't need them, but I'm going to pick them up. Uh, I see level 9 Twin Daggers. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Open Wounds here. Again, once we get to Moras of the Banished, then I'll take time to actually talk about what I personally like to do with mutations, but everyone is so different with that. Um, the One of the main reasons I took that Twin Daggers is one, it's gotten a lot better, and two, it's got Open Wounds. So that is going to actually serve me very well in this next biome. All right, so the curse in Prison Depths is... It's a little challenging, and the reason it's challenging, it's not going to happen in this run, but sometimes enemies will pop up right after the door. In this case, it doesn't happen. Usually it won't, but sometimes it does. You just have to be prepared ahead of time. So you can go ahead and take this slow. Like it's not a big deal. I throw I throw my cluster grenade just to make sure that like, okay, nothing happens. I don't want, I want to make sure no one aggros me, get my lightning bolts off. And then sometimes what happens and it's inevitable, you're going to end up aggroing like five or six enemies at the same time. And you just kind of have to be prepared at that point. Um, I missed the knife throw actually, but luckily the bleed's able to get him. So we're doing okay so far. We have four enemies left and the rest of this should actually be easy. I like to approach the enemies from behind because it makes my life a little bit easier. And just kind of use skills as I need to. This is generally going to be your first like required curse in the game. Um, that or the corrupted prison one. Well, it is the first required one, but uh, there could be optional ones before that. 
Um, so as far as curses are concerned, I'm going to go ahead and just kill the rest of these guys. Um, I could have picked up the katana, but I, I like the way that, that my twin daggers was uh, doing. So it's kind of stuck with that. Um, as far as curses are concerned, every level has a 10% chance of spawning a curse, like in general. So outside of a few levels. So prisoner quarters, it's 1%. High peak castle and distillery, it's 5%. Um, but you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Um, even levels with like a required curse, such as like ossuary, will have like that 10% uh, chance. Uh, prison depths, you only get the one, obviously. Uh, challenge rifts. So, challenge rifts, one, they're hard to see. I know, like, I suck at seeing them, but, you know, when I see them, here's my strategy. I, some people like to take it slow. I like to go fast. My main thing with challenge rifts is, one, if you have an extra jump amulet, try to take it. If you don't, try to see if you can kill all the elites in a level first and then grab something with an extra jump because it makes your life a ton easier. Um, I like to take these pretty deliberately so whether you're slow or fast the thing is you cannot be indecisive as you go this one's short so i was able to get through it pretty easily but it, the second you start being indecisive that's when you're going to start taking hits ends up pretty much good for nobody i'm gonna get a double parry off so parries the cool thing about them is that they actually um don't have a cooldown there's no internal cooldown so uh, it works out really nicely this is one of the harder elites in the game just because it's so bulky. And if you get like a cage, you're kind of screwed. But I'm able to deal with it just fine. If you take a hit here, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Just because, you know, it's just a line elite. And as long as I'm not getting hit by the bombs, it'll be fine. Hammers don't do that much damage. The real damage comes from the fact that if you get hit by one bomb, you're getting hit by others. And I already took the challenge rift. I probably what I could have done is like I could have taken the double purple challenge, the double purple amulet, but I wanted the immediate power of grabbing a scroll rather than like having to deal with, um, you know, just dealing with less power and then having to like do all these like intentional kills and having to strategize. I was like, ah, let's just get the power now. 15% is a lot in this game. All right, so Cage Elite, they suck. I hate them, but if you have enough power, you'll be able to knock them out easily. Sometimes what happens is that you end up getting kind of, you spawn the elite like right as the elite comes and that can be a huge problem because then you're just taking a lot of damage for no reason. I wish that would be patched, but eh, I've never been a fan of it. I don't like the, I don't like the cage. I, I just find it, I, it just doesn't feel fair sometimes. Uh, Twin Daggers, excellent breach now. Uh, that was a change that happened in the alpha. Generally, I'm not really going to talk much about alpha stuff here because it's not really relevant. It's just all the update is, it's just balancing, which doesn't affect overall gameplay. It just affects what weapons are good and what weapons are worse. It was a needed update for sure. And it's been a fantastic, I really liked the update, but you know, not a huge thing for me. Um, so hammers, just try and parry one bomb, run out of there. Like they're bulky and... You know, hammers and prisoner in prison depths versus hammers and distillery, huge difference because they're not that bad in distillery. No enemies that bulky in distillery, or just in late game. Like, there's no real bulky enemy. I would say, like, you have enough DPS by that point to like be able to at least two shot the majority of enemies. Um, if you have the ram rune, you can actually use ram rune like above enemies, like from above enemies, and you can stun all enemies that can be stunned for a significant period of time. Um, some enemies can't be stunned, like uh, slammers and then the uh, skeletons from the cavern, stuff like that. So we are done with the prison depths. We're going to go ahead and move towards the Morass of the Banish. I wanted to go fight Mama Tick because she's one of my favorite bosses in the game. Um, so one thing I haven't talked about yet is scroll fragments. So when the screen pops up on the bottom right, you're going to see as my cat decides to jump into my hamper of dirty clothes. Please get out of there. Hey, Zelda. Hey, get out. Okay, never mind. Um, she's not going to. She's comfortable. Who am I to say otherwise? Anyways, mutations. Let's pause and talk about mutations. Um, my ADHD is kicking in right now. I think my cat also has it. Anyways, um, so mutations. What did I take? So I have combo, open wounds, and predator. That's my general go-to for brutality because I find that to be like the most effective with faster weapons. 
I wouldn't say there's any outright bad mutations on Brutality. I would say there's ones that are more situational than others. For example, something like Porky Pack, I'm not a huge fan of compared to its cousins, the Armadillo Pack and the Acrobata Pack. I like those a lot better. Uh, Scheme is really good if you have a Grappling Hook and a Vorpan, or if you have Phaser, Assassin, Stagger, or Phaser, anything really. Scheme is great. Open Wounds is generally what I like because it's the easiest way in this entire game to get DPS outside of like getting lucky and getting a carbine or having a shield with your desired affix but open wounds gives you bleed 60 percent of bleeds pretty significant so i generally grab that as far as combo is concerned combo is great because it is one of the best mutations in the entire game when it comes to brutality and biomes um so you can move quickly hit a bunch of enemies in a row and then you have your buff for eight seconds you can also grab things such as um initiative depending on the weapon that you're taking Twin Daggers is not as good, but like Katana Initiative is really good. So it's really up to you like what you want and the build that you're trying to run. In general, on normal mode, I like to take the things that are my biggest chance of success regardless of the weapon I take. And for me, that's going to be Combo, Open Wounds, and Predator. That's generally what I go with, but there will be times when I grab other things, especially late game, like I will change my mutations up. You can reroll your mutations for a small price at... The first time you do it, it's only a thousand, then it's two thousand, four thousand, and it just kind of ramps up like that. So just keep that in mind. Generally, you can change. I, I do it about two to three times in a run. The thing with me and money, and I'll talk about money conservation a little bit later, is there are some sacrifices I'm willing to make in order to be able to save later on to do things like changing out mutations. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. More as to the banished. It's not an overly difficult level outside of this very first fight, which is going to be the giant tick. If you have a shield, you're already well prepared for the fight. And you can just go ahead and parry her and then you'll be fine. And you can just kind of roll around and things like that. But she does two attacks on her combo. So unless you parry, you're kind of screwed. So I'm going to go ahead and parry there and then hit twice. And then I'm going to let her jump all the way over towards me because that gives me like more room to be able to like land hits and it's like picking your spots essentially um so i didn't explain scroll fragments so on the bottom right you'll see i just picked it up actually you'll see that i have some uh little gray cubes and those are called scroll fragments so on 3bc and onwards anytime you get four of those little things you get one regular scroll and i can tell you guys each of Actually, yeah, I'll do that. I'll tell you guys each level's uh, scroll fragments. I can only know, know what I'm for in 5BC, because by the time they were implemented, I was already on 5BC and making YouTube content. So, um, Prisoner Quarters doesn't give you any. Um, Arboretum and talk, um, the Promenade, excuse me, I'm sorry. Promenade and Arboretum each give you um, two as I take some unnecessary hits, because this is an example of rolling too soon when it wasn't necessary. Um, Toxosaurus gives you three. Prison Depths and the Corrupted Prison don't give you any. Ossuary gives you, I believe, two. And Ramparts gives you two as well. Moraz, this one, it's going to give me four. Ancient Sewers gives you five. Uh, Slumbering Sanctuary gives you four. Um, the Graveyard gives you three. Stilt gives you two. Fractured Trunds gives you two. Undying Shores gives you four. Clock Tower gives you four, Sepulchre gives you three, Cavern five, and Hypey Castle slash Distillery each give you two. 5e Spoiler Area does not give you any. So um, there will be a chance of like getting up to three random scroll fragments throughout the entirety of your run. Typically you won't get them, but it's like, it's like a small chance. Um, but anyway, so we're kind of just moving along. I like to kind of use the lightning rods as like, just I'm scared of every enemy right now and I'm just kind of running at will. One thing with the Moras the Banished, or sorry, the Banished, that's who the level's named after, is they drop from the ceiling. So you can see a little thing like right above you and you'll see them kind of drop down and then they can aggro you on 4 and 5 DC. So just be like a little bit careful of that. Um, this level does have one required curse and the curse can kind of appear anywhere. So one thing I like to do personally is I like to go on the, on the ends. So I like to go all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Um, I like to go uh, all the way above and then see if the curse is there. If it's at the very end, as I try to save 10 enemies, if there's a level I know that like has a randomly placed curse, so a level that's not like Prison Depths or Sepulchre or something, um, 
for like a randomly placed curse, what I like to do is kind of just make sure I have 10 enemies saved if I haven't already seen the curse. Like if I'm like halfway through the level and I still haven't seen it, then I will intentionally like start saving up enemies and maybe even just let them bunch aggro towards me. So like have like 10 enemies at once that I need to kill. And it's actually easy. You can like cheese curse chests really easily. I just don't have any footage of it because I try not to do it because it is a risk that you take. Not the best risk in the world because it can be a bit weird. And I actually, in this run, I think I missed the curse chest. So as far as shops are concerned, right now we're at level nine gear, which is really good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that bloodthirsty shield synergizes amazingly well with my twin daggers and that's all i'm gonna grab right now because i don't want to have to deal with um having to re-synergize things and i want to save money because later on i'm going to try to get some nice gear i'm going to be hitting up undying shores in this uh what is it in this uh run so level 11 gear always want some stuff plus later on i'm going to need to use a health pot and having money for that would be nice you don't need it but it would be nice um you're probably screaming in your head right now why I'm not taking those scrolls. So they're, again, very intentional. Um, there's a very real reason why, and it's exclusive to 5EC, and it's because of the fact that I still have the issue of malaise, and I don't want to have to deal with that. And I didn't know at that point if the malaise had cleared. I hadn't really looked at the screen. I wasn't really paying attention. I was just kind of focused on like trying to kill the enemies. Um, so yeah, that's why I didn't go and grab the scrolls. So I do see where that cursed chest is. I'm gonna go all the way back and grab that cursed chest. You saw that little icon above the blow gunner. I'll kind of rewind it back for you. Right, right there. The little shield thing. So that little altar right there, that is a legendary weapon. So legendaries are kind of cool now. So they used to just have like, you know, a rare affix and buff and then be a little bit buffed and then be able to uh, scale with all your stats now what they do it's really cool now what they do is they actually scale to your main stat and your second i think it's your second highest stat so right now my two biggest stats are brutality and tactics 12 and 3. so whatever legendary i get it's actually going to scale to 15 instead of or 16 instead of 13 so that's really cool legendary items are i wouldn't say they're busted and as far as like taking them is concerned, I mean, what what you have to keep in mind with legendary items is that you've already built, and especially in my case, I build according to play style. Some people will generally like have like a generalist type of build, like, you know, combo, obviously you can use on any type of build you want. And this is actually why I saved enemies. Now I have six enemies that I can kill and not have to worry about having to face Mama Tick cursed, which I've done before and it sucks. I've lost, I've won. I've cried, I've, I've cried in joy, I've cried in frustration, I didn't cry at all. But anyways, um, so legendaries, you know, good rule of thumb with legendaries is keep in mind what your mutations are because you may have to end up re-rolling your mutations if you really like that legendary. Like getting a legendary Sonic Carbon on Brutality, I don't know. I mean, do you really want to take it when you already have something good going with the Twin Daggers? So that's like an example. Legendary skills are a little bit different just because skills aren't always like good with mutations anyways. Like good as in like they don't always synergize with mutations anyways. So you don't need to worry about it that much. And I generally like legendary skills a little bit better for that reason. Like getting like a giant's whistle or something like that is really cool. In this case, it's the throwing knife. Um, I see the challenge drift. I'm going to take it. Don't worry. Um, in this case, the throwing knife is an excellent a legendary skill to have so challenge rifts, i'll talk more about challenge rifts um something i do occasionally i only do it in two levels in prison depths and corrupted prison i'll actually just scour through the level once my malaise is cleared and then i will um go back and oh i need to show you guys this because this is one of my favorite parries i've ever done just kind of you can parry those shurikens you can roll through them now but sometimes you do need to parry them you can also parry the ball and chain as you can see right there and I get all these fancy moves in, and then um, this one, all you need to do is just kind of wait. But this one, I just kind of potatoed myself right into the spikes. I did all those cool fancy moves, and then I just potatoed right into spikes. It happens. Uh, use, your, use your wall rune. If you have a wall rune, use it. It's very useful. Again, extra jump is going to come in handy here. Sometimes I'll try to take the amulet that gives me more health, but... That one, in this case, it would have given me more health with the triple survival, but I decided not to take it just because I didn't have an extra jump. So 
Uh, I pref like the priority for me is like extra jump always is the priority. And then after that is health and then 75% to uh, bonus or 75%. Um, what is it? It's the projectile nerf that ends up happening, except it's only 25%. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's only actually 25%. Uh, I think it's like a translation issue, um, but I don't know why they haven't fixed it. Because not enough people have made noise about it, but um, so you can see um, I'm able to electrocute those enemies in the water. So I get the achievement. Achievements are already unlocked, but we're in alpha. So achievements are kind of unlocked or they're locked again for that. Um, anything else to note about Moras? I don't think so. We're going to go ahead and just go ahead to Mama Tick. I'll talk a little strategy there. I do have a guide on Mama Tick. So if you want to see that, I'll leave a card for you guys in the top right corner. You guys can check that out. Um, but I hope you're enjoying the video so far and I hope you're able to get some stuff out of it. I'm actually enjoying this myself and, you know, leave a comment. What are some of your favorite builds in this game? Uh, what are some things that have worked for you in the past? What are some things that you're trying to get better at? You know, I kind of want to get to know you guys as like Dead Cells players. Again, another level nine, sh um, little choosy thingy. I don't know what they're called. Like they're not shops, but it's like free gear, I guess. Um, I, I like to play around a lot with the wall rune. The wall rune is your friend, honestly, like use it every chance you get because wall rune is such a good defense thing. It's like such a good defense strategy against a lot of enemies. So very, very useful. Um, so Mama Tick, I'm not going to get too much into this fight. Like I said, I already have a guide. If you want to watch that, you're more than welcome to, but in general, you know, you try to avoid these sites as much as you can. One thing that a lot of people like to do is to kind of face the other way and parry. But for whatever reason, every time I try to flick my controller, it always moves me back towards the right. I don't know why it does that. Mama Tick's pretty easy to parry for the most part, though. Her first phase, she's going to do the horizontal strikes twice. Second phase, she'll do it three times. Um, but I'm actually going to be able to get through this fight pretty quickly because I have a lot of damage already. And I have 16 in my stat, which is a, it's a pretty high amount, I would say. But you can go ahead and parry the sides, especially if you have the exclamation points on. Um, I don't really use shields much. So for me, like it does, it's kind of trivial. Um, I'm just going to keep pairing and then get the no hit right there. So that felt pretty nice. Be able to get that no hit. I've already, I've no hit her before, but like I said, we're still in alpha. I'm going to go ahead, sell that nerves of steel. And then I was thinking about grabbing this fire grenade. Do I grab it? I feel I would grab it if I could. Yeah. Okay. I do. Yeah. Um, lightning rods did great, but you know, we're about to hit up. It's either Fractured Shrines or Graveyard. I want to say we hit up Fractured Shrines up next. So, yeah, we do. Because I remember seeing Jerk Shrooms in Undying Shores. So, I'll talk about Undying Shores when we get there. Don't worry. And I'm going to take that Thunder Shield. So, again, that Thunder Shield is going to actually be a 20 Brutality. Because I have 17 and 3 as my two highest stats. And it's... Runs looking good so far. I'm very encouraged. Twin Daggers is really good now. Like, honestly, it's really, really good. So Fractured Trance, they added a couple new like uh, designs to the level, which have made it a lot better. Um, it's It looks really cool now. I love this level and Undying Shores. I don't like Scarecrow. I'm kind of garbo against it. Yeah, um, don't be like me and run into the, uh, the whatchamacallits, the crows. They go down in one hit and they don't really count as a kill, unfortunately. But it's kind of a cool little like you know, little unique thing to this level. So I don't have a problem with it. Uh, first shop in this level is always going to be the uh, healing shop. Second room is always going to be the curse. So that's the curse right there. One required curse in this level and the two, three and four BC all have a 10% chance of generating a curse. I'm not sure if it's that individually or as a whole. I'm not hundred percent certain, but <clears throat> I don't really know how that stuff works, but um, what I like to do sometimes is I like to use doors to stun enemies to make sure that I can get a proper kill off. Um, I'm really worried about this Inquisitor, like honestly. I try to ricochet the bomb, so, but it doesn't work, and um, I didn't realize that I had already killed it. I guess the bomb did work. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, this is... This is one of the harder curses in the game, in my opinion, just because there's a lot of moving parts and you run and then you get smacked in the face by something and it's just so deflating. But we only have four left. 
I've only ever actually failed this curse once, interestingly enough. It's, I consider it to be the hardest curse in the game. I can't think of any others that are difficult like this one is, just because they're, it's such an environmentally based level. Um, but we're going to go ahead and clear it. And it's funny, I've only died on this curse ever once, but I don't go here that often. So that's probably part of it as well. <coughs> um, okay, so we got the Rocky dude next to us. And with the Rocky dude, he doesn't aggro. So use your skills and run away. He hits hard, so don't get hit. And I don't think you can parry him either. I've tried it. Either my timing was bad or... You gotta be real specific, I guess. But I don't know. I don't think you can parry. I mean, how would you be able to parry this giant-ass thing? And yeah, I'm just gonna hang out up on the ladder and then kill him. And then after that, the doors opens. You get a choice of three legendary items. I'm going to take none of them because none of them really apply in the run. I was thinking about the boy's axe. I ultimately decide to not take it because the carbine would probably be more useful later on. And so I'll just grab all the money. I think that's like... 2000 right there i want to say it's a lot of money it's really nice it's really good stuff and i'm gonna go ahead and check that two bc door there's not gonna be a curse in there um but one thing another thing about fractured shrines is that it's really hard to get a 60 in this level in this level i would say i rarely ever i've only ever gotten the 60 like three times i'm not sure if i get it in this run i don't think i do i think i get hit later on and it's just because of the environment like you're inevitably going to get hit by something in this level the traps don't do a lot of damage and the and falling only does 30 percent now but it's i don't know it's it's a challenging level but i think it is the most unique level in the game like there is nothing like this level and i thought they did a phenomenal job designing it like i cannot say enough good things about this level it's so well done this and the Undying Shores I thought were perfect. <coughs> so I'm just going to kind of check in the shop, see, okay, what has some Bleeding Synergy? What has some Burning Synergy? If there's something I want, I'll grab it. But I'm actually okay with where I am. Sometimes I just like to check the shop and see, like, okay, like, this could work, that could work. But if I'm not 100% certain that it's going to make my run better, then I don't bother. So... Yeah, I, it's, you don't always need to grab something from the shop. Like, just because you get better gear, technically, doesn't mean it's always going to work. Um, always watch the ground in this level, because you never know when there's going to be a light switch. Um, I get hit by the bird. That's what loses me my 60, actually. So that's, that's a dumb way to lose my 60. And what's funny is that <laughs> that was twice that I just potatoed into the bird. <laughs> So now we have, um, I actually have no idea what this enemy's name is. All, I know it's the Spear Lady. And the third, three times! Three times I've gotten hit by the bird. I haven't actually gotten hit by any enemies yet. It's all been birds. I don't know. I, I, I have some weird things in this game. Like sometimes like I can do something so well and other things I just kind of derp. Um, I, I'm actually glad I got hit by the Slasher there. I needed to get hit by something that wasn't a bird to save my sanity. Um... There's not much else in this level I don't think that I've covered. Shockers are pain in the ass, like always. Um, just be careful. Like, be like, look at your surroundings. Like, that's something with a level like this that's so, like, open and very platformy. Like, look at your surroundings because, you know, you may have, like, a fire flower in... Or you may have, like, a fire flower in Mario and have a piranha plant shooting fireballs at you. And if you don't see it in time, then you're going to be losing that uh, fire flower. It's kind of a similar concept in here. Um, and I could definitely see the Mario influence in this level. I think that's why I like it so much. Mario is my favorite like franchise of all time. I know it's such a generic answer, but I mean, seriously, like there's like maybe two bad Mario games out there. And like, I don't think like the bad ones that everyone talks about, like Hotel Mario and shit, like those weren't like real releases. It wasn't like it, it wasn't like Super Mario Galaxy, which was like full-on big boy release there's a word for that i just don't know what it is i think it's triple a i'm not sure though but yeah I, I the mario influence is very palpable in this level and fracture trines you want to kind of go back and then scour every part of the level like i said there's only two uh little things here two scroll fragments but you do get a substantial amount of scrolls in this level i believe it's the same as still um so you get the two 
um, you get two regular scrolls and two uh, dual stat scrolls. As the game wears on, typically you're not really going to be getting dual stat scrolls in your favor. Sometimes you might. I've found that I don't. Um, I'm not sure what the percentage of that is. It says on the screen that there's enemies, by the way. There's not. It's just the birds. Like, I, I do think they need to kind of differentiate that a little bit. And one thing I'm going to do before I leave this level is go to the food shop and heal back up to 100%. Um, I'm not going to bother with the skill shop. My skills are really good as is, and there's no need for me to waste any money. I have 40,000 uh, coins right now. I'm not getting the 60. No, no, no point in doing some certain things. By the way, that spot all the way to the bottom right, um, what that all that is, is that's the place where you unlock the serenade. So you just kind of go through it again, beat the golem looking dude one more time. I don't know what he's called. I don't know what any of the new enemies are called. I just kind of just know them by, by what they do. Um, they're not too bad, honestly. Um, but I am actually went, was supposed to be going to Undying Shores. Forgot to go. Uh, so you can actually... You have to have the cultist outfit to be able to get into Undying Shores. But if you have the homunculus rune unlocked, you can just use your head on like one of those corpses that exist in the level. Use it and then you can get into Undying Shores. So... Undying Shores is a fantastically cool level, and I think I, did I pause here for some time? Yeah, because I didn't get the 60, so let's go ahead and skip to Undying Shores. There's a few gimmicks in this level. Obviously, to unlock the stuff, um, like all the weapons and stuff, like it's a process, but I won't get into any of that because I honestly forgot how I did it. Um, so as far as its main thing of difficulty, I would say it's two things. One is the apostate it's the big orange dude he tends to spawn enemies and those enemies do a fuck ton of damage so you need to be really careful kill the apostate we talk about priorities apostate is your priority here um predator saved me from having to deal with any anything else so you can see that grenadier spawned very briefly with the little aim with the little halo above his head that's the apostate summoning it uh he can summon any enemy in this level be very careful because they do so much damage <clears throat> like i've gotten knocked down from 100 percent to zero percent just by getting hit by an apostate for the first time oh i i was in shock and then you're gonna see me fall down uh yeah that's kind of what i do in this level i always fall i fall down every single time i'm here every single time if if a level has an ability to fall down all the way down, you bet your sweet butt I'm going to do it. It's just what I do. Kill the apostate before he revives enemies. You're better off for it. It's better for your health in real life and in the video game. Very dangerous enemy right there. One of the cooler concepts, actually. I really like the idea of, like, like a necromancer. Like, that's awesome. Is that what a necromancer is? It is, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that guy right there with the halo above his head. That spawned from the apostate, so I go ahead and find the source. Luckily, there is like a little line that leads you towards him, so you'll be fine on that end. Um, there is a 10% chance of a curse at this level, but there's nothing required. Level 11 gear for 5BC. Um, it's very good gear. Very, very good gear. Um, it, it works. I don't know. It's so well designed. Like, it's just a phenomenally done level. Like, they clearly put a lot of love into this one. I can't tell you what game this reminds me of, but kind of reminds me a little of, like, those dungeon crawlers. Like, I don't... I'm probably the only one that sees that, but... Um, so, yeah, that guy uses his homunculus rune and then does very little damage, but it's, like, DOT, so you gotta be careful. Um, we're gonna just move ahead, and... You, you, you wanna be careful with a lot of different things in this level, one of the things that makes this level a lot easier is that it actually you don't deal with many mobs because all the en the enemies are just they kind of have their own platform and it makes it a lot easier so this level isn't like overly complicated you just got to kind of remember certain things and this was actually my first playthrough of like the new and improved undying shore so i didn't realize like oh like there's a little switch and i gotta hit the switch i know like it popped up earlier i just didn't see it um movement as far as movement is concerned you see me doing a lot of like weird things with my jumping and rolling uh it just helps you kind of remain 
conscious, I suppose. Um, I got very lucky not getting hit by the apostate. The apostate itself doesn't do too much damage, but its spawn minions do. All right, we're back. Yeah, I had some issues with OBS. I don't know exactly what happened there, but so movement is a bit of a complicated thing to explain, but kind of it's like I talked about in Arboretum, it's all about placement and certain things you have to do in order to get the placement that you want. And I kind of do that intentionally. Again, it's all about just spacing and being able to roll to the right spot and knowing where enemies are and what their attack patterns are, stuff like that. Like it's, it's some, it's stuff that like, it's stuff you pick up, like as the more and more you play this game, it, it's nothing I can really go into detail about because it's very difficult to explain why I do the things that I do. Um, I'm kind of thinking about what I want later on. I don't want to change anything right now. One philosophy I live by with shops is that if it ain't fixed, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I live and die by that because I've had the same twin daggers since prison depths. No reason for me to change this now. Literally no reason for me to change it because then I'd be sacrificing like what I've gotten used to in this run. Like just because you have a level 12 gear doesn't mean you need to use that level 12 gear. Sometimes a level nine gear is fine. Like you're, you're, you'll be okay. Like, you can beat this game with, like, level 4 gear. It's not that big of a deal at the end of the day. Like, man, I don't know what's going on with OBS. But, yeah, so, uh, you see that malaise cleared. So, when you kill all the enemies with, like, 10% of them left, then you have cleared the malaise. So, uh, not a big deal on that one. Um, I have 56 kills. <laughs> I'm going to try to look for these enemies. They're not going to appear. And that sucks. Happens sometimes. Nothing you can do about it, but, um, you know, you try to get the 60, but sometimes you'll get like 40 in a row and then you'll get hit and then you're not going to be able to get 60 because there won't be enough levels. But like, if you get hit in the very beginning of the level, you can still get the 60. It's just one of those weird things. There's like nothing you can really do about it. There's no better way to like implement it. Like whatever. Um, so what I'm going to, what am I going to do here? Let's find out. Well. We have an oil sword with burning oil. I have a fire grenade. Yeah, we're gonna grab that. That's probably one of the easier takes I'm gonna have. And I'm gonna grab a frontline shield because frontline shield is excellent. And this is one of the things, right? Because yes, I do live by if it's not broke, then don't fix it. But oil sword is fantastic. Also, I really suck against scarecrow. So I need something that's gonna hit it hard and be able to help me out in the general, like, you know, in the setting of this whole battle, I'm anticipating using at least one, um, I'm anticipating using at least one health pot because that's generally how it goes. Um, sometimes I'm able to like one hit it. I've gotten a no hit twice on her, on him, but in general, I like struggle with him big time. So I want like a good weapon that'll like help carry me for the rest of the for the rest of the run and help me through this fight. So that's why I took the oil sword when I when Twin Daggers was working out fine. Um, Scarecrow, I probably will never put out a guide on Scarecrow because I just I'm not good at this battle. I don't know hit him. I just don't. Um, I can tell you how the battle works, but doesn't mean that I'm good at it. Um, I I actually do really well for a while. <laughs> But I already get hit, so. He's just real fast. Like, that's just the issue. Easy to parry, but real fast. But if you start mistiming things, then you're kind of screwed. And then, like, he'll, like, smack you in the face with that, and uh, it's all bad. Um, but at least I'm able to, like, parry him to an extent. Uh... <laughs> And then I got hit a couple more times because I'm facing the wrong way. Ugh. Somehow I survived it. Don't judge my playing skills off the fact that I just suck against Scarecrow. But I survived and that's what matters. I can just use a health pot and I'll heal up and I'll be okay. And everything will be a-okay, right? Except it won't because of the fact that I didn't follow my own philosophy. I probably should have taken the Twin Daggers. There was a valid reason why I took Oil Sword. Should have taken the Twin Daggers. Why? I will explain once we get there. There is a huge reason, there's a huge mistake I made in this run that looking back and even at the time, I was like, 
Oh boy, this is not good. And you're gonna see this in the first like two seconds of this. Essentially what the deal is, is I have open wounds. I need bleed damage. I don't have immediate bleed damage. And I have this pain in the ass guardian knight that's not gonna go down in one hit because I don't have a lot of scrolls. I only have 28 in my stat. So I have to figure something out. And it sometimes you make the wrong decision. I made a decision I thought was gonna work out. I overlooked the fact that Twin Daggers was giving me immediate synergy as opposed to synergy I'm only gonna get from pairing or from having a skill. Pairing takes time, using skills takes time, and very calculated mistake on my part. Anyways, let's move on. So we're in Hypey Castle, pretty standard level as far as difficulty. It's not that bad. <clears throat> There's a couple things that you want to kind of watch out for. One is this guy, uh, you know, just play around with the platforms, play on the walls. Do anything you can to be able to kill him because he's a very difficult enemy because he's so spastic and eccentric. Like, he'll jump back, he'll dash towards you. Just make sure that he does, make sure that you only hit him on your terms. Do not ever try to hit him on his terms because you're not going to win that fight, especially if there's like a demon or if there's like like a bombardier or something, then you're, you're doubly screwed. So, just things like that you got to remember. Um, do I take that? Yeah, that was... Uh, I'm not a fan of doing any of that. I mean, yes, flame turret is, flamethrower turret is very good, but fire granny is actually better in brutality, in my opinion. Flamethrower is really good for um, tactics, but for brutality, I, I like flame grenade better because it's more immediate impact, and melee is all about that immediate impact. But I don't know. Yeah, not the best decision. I mean, I'm looking back at this and like, one thing you guys might want to try is like recording your runs. Uh, it, it helps. It really helps give context. As far as shop, you know, same thing I said in the last level, you know, look at what options are available for you in your shop. Make sure you're not taking anything that would um, jeopardize the integrity of your run. Like my dumbass trying to take a 100% damage firebrands, even though there's literally no reason for me to do that because I could have just, I was doing fine. I could have just grabbed it at the end, but you know, I needed that synergy now. I'm looking back at this, I'm kind of cringing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of cringing hard because I could have just grabbed this at the end of the level. I was doing fine, but that's neither here nor there. I guess the other way to look at it is as long as you're alive, you're doing fine. And that's one way to look at it. Yeah, runs can be not as good as others, but you know, if you, a win is a win is a win. Counts the same all the way around. And as you can see, I've lost some substantial money because I did a lot of re-rolls to get the affixes I wanted on. Uh, I can't remember what I re-rolled. I think it was the shield. And yeah, uh, and I just got to run away now. Not good stuff there. Yeah. And that's why, yeah. Uh, so let's, let's rewind that back. Let's see what happened. Okay. Okay, what I should have done here I should have used the firebrands and jumped back. I should have just jumped back. There was no reason for me to try and take on everybody at once. And then I wasted another health pot because I did that. So lesson to be learned there. Don't play. I mean, I play very recklessly. Don't play as recklessly as I did right there. You need to be very careful with what you do when you take a new item because you don't know what situations you're going to find yourself in. So, um, I hope like I'm giving you guys some sort of context into like how to approach these runs because I'm looking at that and I it was a very preventable thing too. It's a very preventable thing at the end of the day because you don't need to try to bull rush everything. I know I have a habit of doing that, but there's no reason you should be doing it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of continue this level. Um, I just kill the whole overworld first and then go into the doors. If you want to do the doors first, that's fine. That's up to you. I just want to clear the whole thing. And the main reason I do it is because of malaise. So when you clear the top, when you clear the top part, the malaise will change. Or it'll disappear, I believe. Or it'll be very close to disappearing. So that's why I generally do it. But you don't have to. 
especially if you're not running malaise if you're on 4 bc and lower why would you do that the grappling cook's really good that's why i took it <laughs> um and now i have a firebrand so having a flamethrower turret is kind of redundant no reason for me to take it and dual stat scroll always nice to see so high peak castle gives you two regular scrolls or no sorry two dual stat scrolls one regular scroll no sorry two dual stat scrolls two regular scrolls and one of them is hidden behind the third door um Oh, okay. I think I'm going to have to rewind that one back. That one was nice. Okay, so. Kill both these guys, right? Now I see the this guardian guy. And I don't want to deal with him. So I hook him, stun him for a little bit. And able to escape. Uh, demons cannot be burned unless they're elite. Which for whatever reason they can be burned. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the firebrands on him. Hook. One shot. Hook's really good now. It's a ridiculously good skill. I generally don't care about the 60 in this level, but I wanted to see if I could do it. Because um, it's a good kind of litmus test for Hand of the King and like the rest of the game. Come on, OBS, get it together. Anyways. So, yeah, it's a good litmus test, I would say, for the rest of the game. But, I don't know, Distillery and Hypey Castle are generally harder levels. Because, you know, they're, they should be. They're at the end of the game. And I wouldn't place too much value if you take a bunch of hits there. There's a lot of variables. Boss fights are generally easier than the biomes. At least it is now for me. You know, outside of Scarecrow. But the thing with biomes is that, like, one bad move on higher BCs can, like, really screw you up in terms of health. And even end up in death sometimes. You just gotta be careful. It's really all it is. But now, I can actually relax a little bit because I don't have malaise. Which is really nice. And I can just kind of kill the rest of these guys. I'm going for the 60 just to see if I can get like another item. I'm going to get the second group of elites, which is this guy, the Dark Trackers. Go ahead and move forward. And yeah, Grappling Hook really kind of just saved me here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to aggro the Bombardier, but the shield ability just sucks. I hate it. But able to kill him pretty easily. Nothing doing there. And now I'm going to beat up the Guardian. Move on towards the last room, which is the green room. If you're trying to speed run, don't worry about this third room. But I'm doing a regular run, so I am worried about that last room because I want as many scrolls as possible. Um, ignore me trying to go to a room that I've already been to. And I say green room, I, mean, I meant blue room. I have not been to the blue room yet. Um, go ahead and kill that guardian. Yes, good stuff there. And anything notable here? Not particularly. If you have a shield, this level is like 20,000 times easier. I'm just kind of throwing this out there. Most levels are easier with the shield, but you don't get the DPS. That's really the only issue. Um, I kind of faced the wrong way. I do get the 60 here, which is nice. I'm going to throw my Molotov cocktail, hook, kill it. And then I'm going to go straight towards the ending. I don't want to screw anything up by battling more enemies. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the end. I picked up all my squirrel fragments. I, there's an extra one there, but um, you need four to complete a uh, scroll. And there's no possible way I'm going to get four. So I'm just going to ignore it um, because it doesn't look pretty because it'll be like a strand of a gray cube and it looks ugly anyways hand of the king i also i also have a guide on hand of the king it's a pretty straightforward fight once you understand the patterns but before that it's the biggest pain in the ass you can possibly have so hand of the king i have a guide on it so you don't need to worry about that too much um i'm gonna reroll the firebrands to not have 300% damage. That would suck. So, what weapons should you take in Brutality? That's really up to you. Um, only reason I'm changing mutations now is because I have a new weapon. And that doesn't have bleeding synergy. So I'm just kind of going with Instinct of the Master of Arms, Scheme for the Hook, and... What's the other one that I end up taking here? Probably Triage, if I were to guess. 
I was thinking about Vengeance, because that's a crap ton of extra damage you get now, but I think in Emergency Triage is probably your best bet. Or Disengage. Okay, I went with Emergency. Um, it's really up to you what weapons you want to take. I would say the the most important thing is to keep in mind that you only have a finite amount of money, which means that you're not going to be able to do certain things late game uh, if you keep spending money on trying to get different items. Stick with one item. Stick with stick with at least a couple items for a while and see like what you're able to pick up and then just kind of go from there base your mutations off of that you can win with any weapon in this game i mean yeah some weapons are harder than others to use but in general most weapons will be able to get you through a run i mean all of them will be able to get you through a run so i wouldn't worry too much about like what's good what's not what should i take what shouldn't i take like that's not the point of this. The point of this is really just to say, hey, like, um, this is how I'm approaching my particular brutality run. And yeah, Hand of the King, pretty, pretty easy fight as far as this build is concerned, because I, I'm very well versed in the oil sword, um, spectrum. I understand how it works, and I know how to dodge Hand of the King. Again, I have a guide written on it, so the expectation would be that. I can do Hand of the King fights pretty well, <laughs> but I do die against him sometimes. I don't want you to think that I'm 100% perfect all the time against him. Um, now, I do want to note that we do have the spoiler areas coming up. If you want to click off the video, go ahead. I'll leave a timestamp to like the end of the video or whatever. Um, Phaser, I should not have taken it to be honest with you, but... I, here we are. Uh, phaser is good. It's just... I do like Grappling Hook better in almost all circumstances. And because I got greedy on the reroll, because I was trying to get a Poison Affix. Uh, yeah. Don't get greedy with your rerolls, guys. And this is why you save money. This is why you save money, kids. Also, Legendary rerolls are pretty expensive. So that's also my bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this brownie. So you're going to get to hear the muffled sounds of me talking over this run. I'm just kidding. But hardest part about this level, librarians. Librarians suck. No one likes them. They have no friends. That's why they're librarians. Um, so I'm just kind of jumping around. Use your platforms in this level. Definitely use your platforms. Um, bombers are not that bad. The only thing about bombers is that like, if you're trying to dodge them and you have a bunch of other enemies trying to hit you, then it becomes a giant royal pain in the ass. Um, librarians, they have specific timing. Basically, it's an audio cue for dodging it. Or if you have a wall next to you, just roll up against the wall. It actually, uh, they'll never hit you if you do that. Um, failed experiments, you know, they can be a bit painstaking. But able to kill that magistrate pretty easily. There used to be a glitch in this game, and I really miss it because it was the best glitch of any game I've ever played in my life. Basically, what would happen is you would you would kind of be chilling, you'd be doing your astrolab, and then out of nowhere, about a hundred failed experiments would come. Um, so most of the time, it would result in a crash. If but you could probably get through it if you like don't like mess your game up too much. But, like, you can get through it. And it's not overly difficult if you have, like, a ranged weapon. The, I think the first run I ever posted on this channel. So, one of my first videos ever, I think, was... It had that. Uh, I, they might have gotten rid of it in, like, 1.5 or 1.6. It's been a very long time since I've seen it. I really miss it. I wish they would bring it back as, like, a feature for this level. Just bring back, like, 800 failed experiments just in a row. Like, it's so fun. And it's so dumb. But it's amazing, and I love it. Um, Astrolab used to be harder because it's so open and used to end up falling everywhere. But now that's not necessarily the case because you take trap damage from falling, which is capped at 30%. 30, losing 30% HP is not the biggest deal in the world. So I wouldn't... Again, a lot of things I just wouldn't worry about too much. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and kill this magistrate. Placement, I kind of knew where she was, able to just kill her from there. Nothing too bad about that. I'm just kind of comparing health with the um, 
with the amulets, but it's not that significant of a change, and I'll always take the one that has extra jump. Um, yeah, I mean, we're kind of speeding through this level a little bit. I try to go as fast as I can on this level, because the more I try to delay, the more malaise stacks up, and this is a level you don't want malaise on, because these enemies are already hard enough. If the easiest enemy in a level is the bomber, y you got problems, but I'm able to handle this pretty easily. I mean, fairly trivial stuff. <clears throat> so this level has two keys, and those two elites will always remain the same. Um, one is going to be that slammer, and then the other is going to be the failed experiment. Um, and by that point in the run, you should be able to like be close to one-shotting elites, so don't worry about it too much. Um, I'm just kind of trying to not die here. I'm just like trying my best to not die. <laughs> That's really where we are right now. Uh, uh, okay. I, sometimes that's just going to happen where you have a librarian running after you and a bunch of enemies running after you. Um, so just use your wall runes. Use your walls, honestly. That's the biggest thing I can say about librarians is because they don't hit you if you're running against a wall, they're not going to. You can just use that as like the priority. Librarians are a priority enemy, but the problem is so are slammers. And so that's what actually makes this level really hard. You have two high priority enemies at once, and the level becomes very challenging. But able to get through it, nothing nothing too crazy here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and gra grab the Serenade because I don't know why. I honestly don't even like the Serenade. I, I don't like it. I think it's a bit... Um, what's the word? Extra, I guess. Um, but it is powerful. I mean, I'll give it that. It is very powerful, but not a fan at all. Uh, just... <laughs> No, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for that. But I decided to grab it just because I felt like it. Um, the biggest thing about Serenade is when you use it, um, it's not on cooldown anymore, but this the actual skill has a certain cooldown. You got to be careful with stuff like that. But you see all the Serenade stacks on top of that Librarian. If I grab the Serenade as the actual weapon, which you can do by pressing the button that it's on while it's activated then you can get crits for a certain amount of time. Um, it's it's quite powerful. I mean, it's not a bad skill. I don't want people to think that I think that. It's not bad. I just think it's a bit tacky. Tacky is the word I was looking for. It's very tacky. Um, more librarian shenanigans. I try to get the two keys first and then do the castle. But you can really do this in whatever order you want. I mean, this is... The castle is the hardest part of this level. So you're doing everything to gear up for the castle. The hardest part about the castle is the lasers and your luck in where they place it. So be careful. Okay, so now the lasers are going to be shooting at you, all timing right there. If you have a shield, you can go ahead and use the shield. I'm going to just kind of avoid all these mobs. And again, that's the nice thing about having a lot of DPS in the late game is that you can just smack enemies in the face. And you can use your platforms and stuff like that. Um, I have the I have the serenade as my actual weapon, and this is actually uh, one of the weird things about serenade is that it gets rid of one of your weapon slots, right? So they have to think about which weapon slot you want to get rid of. In this case, I wanted to get rid of the oil sword, so now I have to think, okay, like what? Where do I put my actual serenade though? Um, it's going to my second weapon slot. So what I need to do, or it's replacing my main weapon. So what I needed to do is that I need to switch around my firebrands and oil sword so that the serenade or no what do i end up doing i switched the serenade and the last rating r i'm sorry so now i get my firebrands when i need to so pretty simple stuff there and now i'm doing a lot more damage with my oil sword and my serenade is doing what it's supposed to be doing so anyways the two elite birds at the top a lot of people like to use the elevator trick i don't like it so i generally just smack them in the face and there it is fight lasts for like two seconds so collect your time now now is the time where i get to kind of look at different things and look at okay are there any last minute things that i need to do the answer is going to be no most of the time because you have your build by that point but just in case you can um there's nothing i really need to do here i like all of my skills i like everything that i have in this level so we're just gonna go ahead and fight the collector 
Uh, collector's not a terribly hard fight. I was thinking about doing a guide. If you want to see me, if you want a guide on Collector, leave a comment. I can help you guys try to get that white outfit if you want to. Uh, but I've never really cared about doing one. And someone's already probably done it and they've probably done a really good job of it. There's a lot of amazing Dead Cells content creators out there. Um, a lot of new people since I last started making content. So, um, yeah, it's cool stuff. But Collector's not that bad of a fight. You just got to make sure you don't get hit a bunch of times in a row. If you get hit, it's not a huge deal. Um, but certain attacks, you don't want it to hit you. So, uh, you don't want the stab move to hit you because it'll hit you multiple times. You don't want to get hit by the down slam because it sucks and it sucks to get hit. Um, the spin attack is not a big deal. If you get hit, you generally can just roll out of it. Um, unfortunately, I don't get any heals off on him. Collector does take... Uh, four heals before he drops the panacea well on the fourth heal, he'll drop the panacea and that's when you can go ahead and kill him um but he'll heal three times successfully before that and i'll kind of be going back and forth between the serenade because i don't want to lose the serenade and it's giving me some good crits um so far i've no hit this fight um and then i'm gonna make some really bad mistakes coming up um collector is a fight that like i typically am able to get the win but sometimes i just do some really dumb stuff but I'm able to get the next heal off. And so the third heal will come to another room where there's a spike ball float floating around. And if you don't get him to three heals by then, he'll go back to the room where he spawned the enemies and it'll be a slightly higher level tier of enemies. So like arbiters, that sort of thing. Um, and if you do it again and he goes back to that room again, then you have to deal with like golems and it gets worse and worse and worse. Um, if you want to see how bad it gets, uh, watch my Spartan Sandals only run don't watch it it was one of the more miserable runs i've ever had um i'm gonna go ahead avoid um the little lasers except i don't because i forget how to play the game and yeah i'm gonna avoid the lasers again one two the third one's delayed and just kind of go back and forth between my oil grenade and my uh, other stuff and barely avoid all the fireballs now he's going to be doing the laser again because he wants to be an obnoxious asshole and just keep hitting him with the firebrands. And I just heal up just because I want to make sure that like I don't have to um, deal with anything crazy. Um, and that's probably good I did it there because the tornado hit me. But I can grab him, grab the Panacea, and now he's a pretty trivial kill. And I'm just going to grab the Serenade and then smack him a couple times in the face. And that's going to be this run. So... Brutality, the idea is you want to make sure that you are synergizing according to your weapon. Survival and tactics, you don't always have to do that. You can synergize according to your skills, but you want to synergize with your main weapon because that's going to be the main source of your DPS. And so firebrands with oil sword is like a natural synergy. Understanding how weapon synergies work is a vital part of death cells. But with Brutality specifically, because everything is moving so fast and you're constantly in the enemy's face, you want to get the kills as quick as possible. So, yeah, that is going to be Brutality. I'll do Tactics and Survival coming up. And thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch my content. Leave a like, subscribe for more Dead Cells, and all that good stuff. I'll see you all later. Have a great night, everybody, and stay safe out there.